Nihal, DV Asia. How are you guys doing today? Uh, we're here at uh, NAB 2015 in Las Vegas, and uh, we've got all kinds of exciting announcements from Adobe. Um, we're showcasing uh, some new features in programs like After Effects, some new uh, services as part of the uh, Creative Cloud, and uh, also showcasing some new uh, applications for iOS devices, such as iPhone, iPad, um, that uh, add new workflows with the Adobe Video Tools. So um, on the screen right now, I've actually got the uh, libraries are actually open. And uh, libraries have been in Photoshop and Illustrator. And one of the things that we're showing are uh, libraries working inside of After Effects and Premiere Pro. So I can get started showing you some of the uh, libraries inside of After Effects. Now, once again, libraries were uh, initially brought to uh, the Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop software. And it's a really wonderful way of taking and kind of putting together a series of colors and graphics. And uh, now we even have uh, color looks can exist inside of a library. And it's very easy to collaborate with other artists across applications um, by having the same library shared between different artists in each of these different apps. So you can see over here I actually have uh, a number of different libraries available and I've got a special one called NAB 2015. And this one includes um, a series of graphics and looks that we can use within After Effects. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over and show my project here. And I've got a, uh, a graphic that was created in Photoshop. And I can take this graphic and just drag it and drop it right into my project. And now I can work with it inside of After Effects. These color looks, this is something brand new we're showing here at NAB for the first time. And these come from an, a mobile application from the on iOS called Project Candy. This is something we're kind of previewing right now that uh, enables you to create your own color looks just using the built-in camera in an iPhone or an iPad. So I've already got a color grade applied to this shot. I'm going to turn that off and I've created an adjustment layer. I'm going to take one of these looks that I've created here. We'll start with one called Win Gold. This is named after the hotel here in Vegas and I called it that because it's based on the colors of the, what the hotel looks like at sunset. So I can drag and drop that and you see it's now applied to the preview here in After Effects. And I can kind of dial up and down the amount of that that I want to have applied to the scene. Now something you might notice that's a bit different from traditional After Effects here is I'm doing all of this and turning layers on and off and dragging and dropping graphics and this preview window is actually not stopping. We've done a lot of work behind the scenes and this has been a multi-year effort to make After Effects more responsive, make it more interactive, give it better performance. And uh, so this is the first version with this new interactive performance. And we're calling this uh, uninterrupted previews. So this gives me the ability to just keep working within After Effects and keep the preview running even while I'm making changes, cleaning up my project, turning on and off layers. Now we can take this uh, to a new level here. I'm going to create a new viewer in After Effects. And I'll lock this side. And with this selected, I'll go ahead and start this playing back. And over on this other side, I can actually open up the subcomp of what we were working on here. And with this, I can use uh, this graphic that we dragged and dropped from the libraries. I can actually drag and drop it right into this comp. I can select it, scale it down in size. And we'll scale it up, scale it down. It's a little too small. We'll bring that up a little bit there. And you can see that this animation is still happening in the main composition on this size side. Uh, in the past, you know, you would have to stop and start previewing every single time you want to make a change. But this new interactive performance really makes After Effects feel more modern, more responsive, and it makes me feel much more creative as an artist. So I'm super excited about that. So let's go ahead and switch over to Adobe Premiere Pro. One of the newest things we've added inside of Adobe Premiere Pro is uh, a new way of working with color. 
And you'll notice kind of the theme of the show this year for Adobe has been to uh, create new workflows involving color and bringing uh, the idea of doing color grading and really using color for storytelling um, in a lot of new and interesting ways. SpeedGrade and Premiere Pro have been integrated for a couple of cycles now and it's possible to take a sequence in Premiere Pro and send that directly over to SpeedGrade. But what we heard from a lot of people is they wanted to have more control inside of Premiere. So something new that we have added is the new Lumetri color panel that is within Premiere Pro. And the interface and design of this was actually kind of taken from the Adobe Lightroom software. Uh, a lot of people like Lightroom because you can start with very simple controls, but work up to very complex controls all within one panel. So this is designed in the exact same way. So I can select a layer here and I can start to work with this. Um, the basic controls here include white balance adjustment, exposure adjustments or contrast adjustments. So these are all common controls that everybody understands how these work. Um, I can move from here and also I can add things like an input LUT. So if I have a specific uh, look from a camera, like if I'm shooting on an Alexa camera or if I'm shooting on a Canon camera or a RED camera, these give me a baseline profile for what the camera looks like and so if you have one from a specific camera maker you can apply that on input as well. If we want to get creative we can go to the creative tab and this includes a whole series of different color looks and if I kind of move through this a little bit we actually have uh, the ability to see these looks applied directly onto our footage just by you know, selecting a layer here, we can see a preview of what these different color looks are going to, to uh, actually do with our footage. So I can go through and say, oh, wait a minute, I kind of like this Cinespace look. So I can choose Cinespace, and then I can see that applied to my footage. I can move further into this with color curves. Um, we have RGB curve control, this new color saturation wheel where I can separate out and add key points to adjust specific colors that I can boost or I can, I can heighten or I can diminish specific colors by using this new interface that specifically affects certain colors in my uh, look. And again, this is all designed to be a real-time performance uh, color engine within Premiere. Um, if you need traditional controls, we have shadows, midtones, and highlights. And we even have a vignette control that can very easily be turned on and we can add things like a vignette to the video directly inside of this new panel. So very, very exciting feature there. Oh, I'm running out of time and I've got to go back to the NAB uh, Adobe booth and do an After Effects demonstration. But before I go, I really want to show you something that is uh, a new application that will ship with Adobe After Effects when it's ready. And it's something called Adobe Character Animator. And the idea behind Character Animator is this is an a easy to use tool to do character animation based on a Photoshop file or an Illustrator file. Now I'd love to show you the complexity of this. I'm gonna start by showing you something very, very simple. Let me start by turning on my webcam. And you can see I've got my uh, smiling face in the corner. I'm going to uh, simply import an Illustrator file. I already have this Illustrator document open here. And you can see that this is just a basic Illustrator file with basic uh, primitive shapes where we've drawn a little monster here. The only thing special that's been done is we have a, uh, the layers broken out. So we have the background, the left eye, right eye, and we have a special naming convention for this with uh, Character Animator. It's in the documentation. So as long as you make your artwork with the various la layers named properly, all I have to do is go into Character Animator and choose File, Import. And I can import that same .ai file. And all of the rigging actually gets done automatically based on those names. You have control of it inside of Character Animator. And you can also turn on special properties like wind or gravity. Um, and you can even have special preset animations. 
um, that can be fired off by pushing a key on the keyboard. Now I'm going to set a rest pose for my camera and I can actually I'll bring my camera up full screen and you can see what's going on here is we actually are tracking my face that's very scary looking. <laughs> I'll go ahead and make that smaller here. We'll take my uh, red monster puppet and I'll choose to add that to the scene. And you can now see that this is tracking my face. Ah, ah. So with no work at all, we are suddenly seeing the puppet is actually being animated. So from here I can add control points, I could lock this to the ground, add springy controls and other things um, to make this monster animate even more. But that's the basics of getting started with Character Animator. See you next NAB. Thank you. Sai-chan.